hospital. The first thing I did as I sat down was cut my finger. It was a paper cut. And despite working at one of the largest hospitals in the state, I couldn't find a single band-aid laying around. I sucked on my index finger like a vampire while I scrambled my desk for that band-aid. I found one. Purple. I'm a hospital receptionist, and all that means is I greet visitors, make appointments, and look nice. Well, as nice as a 30-year-old man who hasn't slept in hours can look. That night, as we call it, it was just me and a few nurses on the floor. Other than that, it was ghost quiet, except for the heavy, heavy rain. I sat back on the cheap recliner chair all receptionists get the honour of using, while addressing my band-aid. I listened to the television mounted on the corner of the ceiling as it broadcasted a seemingly important message. Authorities say the woman was last seen on Cedar Avenue. I looked up to see if the television was showing any images of this strange woman. None. It was yet another crazy person with no name and no face who we were supposed to look out for. Not creepy at all. Authorities also say the woman was reportedly walking around and asking people very, very bizarre questions. I focused back on my desk and continued working, but I still listened as the news anchor went on and on. She continued. The following statement was issued by an unidentified government official. Listen carefully, folks. Whatever she asks you, answer no. Do not under any circumstances answer yes. Officials won't come in further as to why, citing security clearance. Please are asking that you immediately call 911 if you deem anyone suspicious. I thought that part of the coverage was quite odd, but I wasn't sure anything could scare me anymore. Working here at the hospital, I thought I had seen it all. At the flash of the ruby red ambulance lights, I'd seen people come in with severed arms, legs, fingers, people who somehow managed to scoop out their eyes, failed suicide attempts, and much, much more. You get used to it. My head was practically sunk into my desk as I filled out paperwork. That's when I heard something very subtle initially. I heard it coming from the front doors, the entrance. The automatic doors opened and closed, opened and closed, slamming against each other and sounding an obnoxiously loud thud each time. The very dim lighting I had surrounding my desk flickered incessantly. Hello? I called out, seated behind the safety of my desk. Only the whistling wind responded. Hello? I called out again. I felt obligated to check if someone was there, especially since it might have been someone who was injured and needed our attention. I reluctantly picked myself up from my chair and walked over to inspect. I nearly slipped and cracked my head open as the entrance floor was almost flooded from the rain. I noticed footsteps, wet shoe marks that seemed to come inside the hospital and then back out. I stood near the doors, poking my head outside, and looked. All I heard was the distant sounds of sirens and honking cars. The rain poured harder. The peace and quiet was disturbed within moments of me sitting back down. The automatic door started again, opening and closing, slamming shut and letting in more rain as they did. But this time, I heard gentle footsteps make their way towards me, tapping closer and closer. Someone slowly emerged from the darkness between the entrance and front desk. A woman with drenched black hair approached, wearing a dark brown raincoat and a pair of boots that were too large for her toothpick legs. Her face was inundated with wrinkles and wet makeup. Her black eyeshadow smudged. Despite the heavy rain outside, she didn't seem to have bothered wearing her hoodie. Hello, how can I help you, ma'am? She didn't respond. She looked around, scanning and observing an unimpressive hospital. Is there something I can help you with? Still nothing. We engaged in a brief stare down, which she won. I looked down and pretended to gather important paperwork. Are you here to visit someone? Then finally, she responded without talking. She simply nodded and then took a few steps forward, her hands hanging down her side. Her posture was unnatural, almost uncomfortable. Okay, for now I need you to sign here, then we'll have to wait a few hours for visiting time to begin, I said, pushing forward a sheet of paper and a pen. She raised her arm to sign and then abruptly stopped. She seemed startled by something on the desk. She looked at me, tilted her head and, with a smile that was as wide as her eyes, said, Would you please move that for me? I was confused at first, and then she pointed at it with her index finger as drops of rainwater tapped against my desk while her arm hovered over it. I took the little crucifix we had at the front desk and put it in a drawer. The woman proceeded as if she was going to finally sign the paper and then stop before writing anything. She dropped the pen on the ground and stood there again, staring at me. She asked me a question. Do you reject the Trinity? I'm sorry, I replied. For a few more uncomfortable moments, the woman stood there, like an ancient statue. I had no idea what she meant by the question. Ma'am, who exactly are you here to see? Family? Friend? What's your relationship with the patient? Before I could finish talking midway through my question, the woman turned around and walked out the door, still smiling and her eyes as wide as I'd ever seen on a person. I went back to work and tried to move on, but her creepy mannerisms were trapped in my mind throughout the night. At around 4am I spotted one of the children in our hospital walking down the hall. Nina, is that you? I called out. All the kids in the hospital knew me. 
I was proudly considered one of the cooler employees. I let them break the rules, I brought them snacks upstairs and even told them scary stories despite their predictable regret later on. The nurses would get angry with me every time I had one of my scary story nights. They always had a bunch of bed sheets to change the next morning. I only did these things for the kids when I wasn't busy when it was a quiet night, and this was one of those uneventful nights, which of course was a good thing. Anyway, it was very odd to see Nina awake at that time, walking down those shadowy halls. She was absolutely terrified of the dark, and yet, there she was. Nina, is that you? I squinted my eyes as I walked towards her. Sorry, Matt. She began. I don't want to be there anymore. She had dragged her blue blanket along with her, which was her way of gesturing to us that she wanted to move to another room. The other kids bothering you again? I asked. I took hold of her hand and began walking her back to the elevator. Matt, please, don't make me go back up there. I don't like the new nurse. I stopped walking. What? I said, kneeling to Nina's level. She keeps asking us the same question over and over. I, I said no so many times. I keep telling her no, but everyone else kept laughing with her and saying yes to her. Please, I don't want to go back up. Nina's words immediately played flashbacks inside my tired, overworked mind. Something about a strange woman going around and asking even stranger questions. I didn't pay enough attention to that broadcast to notice the woman, but even if I had, I thought she had left the hospital. I ditched the elevator and ran up a flight of daunting stairs, stomping against each step with all the force I could muster. I probably woke up all those sleeping employees I was so loud. I opened the door to the children's room and couldn't believe my eyes. I checked each room, each one on each floor. I woke up my co-worker nurse and asked about the children. She couldn't find them either. We looked everywhere and put the hospital 